I'm Buck August, a dietitian with Enlo, and I'm here to talk about some heart healthy dinner ideas. Dinner, I think, is a good opportunity to think about the healthy eating plate. Now, there's different versions of this, but there's one that I like from Harvard Medical School. And it takes a plate and it divides it into sections. So one half of the plate is produce. That could be like fruits and vegetables. About a quarter of the plate is a carbohydrate, uh, specifically what they say is a whole grain. That could, there could be some other options that could go in there. And then about a quarter of the plate is a healthy protein. They also encourage choosing healthy fats. So that's things like your olive oil, maybe canola oil, nuts and seeds, drinking plenty of water, and staying active. But coming back to the plate, I, like I say, I think that's a good way to think about a balanced dinner. So we want to include some sort of healthy protein. A good portion of protein is about the size of the palm of your hand. So about that size and about that thickness. So for me, that's maybe you know four or five ounces of protein for dinner. And that's gonna be about a quarter of the size of my plate. Some examples of healthy proteins could be something like salmon. This is frozen salmon, which is easier for us to buy at home and keep and then cook when we're ready to. Could be something like chicken breast. So with chicken, great opportunity to marinate it. So you can make your own marinade, use different herbs and spices, and you can choose things that are low in sodium. Most marinades that you buy in the store that are ready to go are gonna have a whole lot of salt. But if you make a marinade on your own, again, you can use herbs, spices, and different things, um, low sodium broth even to keep the sodium content down. Uh, a little bit of citrus in there like lemon lime. This is gonna be we're gonna cook this up in the crock pot and use it for some burritos, I think, tonight. Maybe some whole wheat tortillas. With proteins, back to that, when it comes to things like red meat, you know, oftentimes for heart health, we say go easy on the red meats, and that's good advice. The reason is that red meats like beef tend to have a lot of saturated fat, and you have to be careful with how they're labeled. So this is from Costco and this is organic ground beef. So that sounds healthy, like it's gonna be a good choice. Um, basically organic, they're saying it's raised without antibiotics, no growth hormones, but this is 85% lean, 15% fat. So in the world of ground beef, that's quite a bit of fat. 80-20 is a common one as well. So 80% lean, 20% fat, that's a lot of fat. But even with this one, that's 15%. When I cook this up in a pan, there's a lot of grease left over. So it's a pretty high fat content. So if you do use ground beef, you cook it up in a pan, like I said, you can drain it afterwards. So what I'll do is take a plate, put some paper towels on it, and then um, pour the ground beef onto the paper towels. A lot of that fat gets soaked up into the paper towels. Another thing you can do though is just buy leaner ground beef. So you can get 90-10, that only has 10% fat. You can get uh, 90, 93% lean, sometimes even leaner than that. So you can get really lean ground beef. Another option is doing something like ground turkey. Oftentimes that's gonna be less fat, less saturated fat than the ground beef, but you still wanna read your labels because some ground turkey has a lot of fat and a lot of saturated fat still. Because if they use the dark meat in the turkey, different parts of the turkey, it can have, like I say, a lot of fat and a lot of saturated fat. So it's real important to read your labels and look for things that are gonna be healthier choices for you. One other option that a lot of people are leaning towards these days, getting away from meat, they might do one of those meat alternatives, so Beyond Beef or the other ones out there, Impossible Burger. Those are fair. It's Nutrition-wise, they're actually very comparable to beef. So in terms of the saturated fat, the protein content, all that. So in that way, it's not necessarily a healthier choice. But if you are trying to get away from meat in general, that can be a, a good stepping stone, a good bridge towards more of a plant-based diet. And eating more plants in general is definitely heart healthy. So we talked about our protein. Salmon or fish is great. Try to do fish at least twice a week. Lean meats like chicken breast, occasionally doing a red meat, and if you can, choose the leaner cuts. With red meat, oftentimes the leaner cuts are tougher, so that's a great opportunity to use make it into like a stew. So these days, like slow cookers have been popular for a long time, but this is a kind of like an Instapot or an Instant Pot. This is the 
uh, Pampered Chef brand. My mom sells Pampered Chef, so I have this one. Um, these are great. So this is a pressure cooker. So pressure cookers have been around for a long, long time, but they've become more popular recently and they're maybe more user friendly than they used to be. So these are great. You can use a tougher cut of meat, cook it in here, and it tends to come out better than if you took that real tough cut of meat and you grilled it, then it's just going to be even tougher. Instapots or, or slow cookers are also a great place where you could add some beans. Beans can be another good alternative for protein. They have protein, they have lots of fiber. Fiber is really heart healthy uh, and other nutrients in there. And uh, they cook real well in a slow cooker or an Instapot. And they're the type of thing I like to set up in the morning and then it cooks all day. And when we get home from work, it's ready to go. So for us, and my wife and I both work, that's a great option for making dinner easier. So we have our protein, could be a variety of sources. And we talked about on the plate, lots of produce. So dinner time's a great time for vegetables, maybe some fruit. Vegetables, I love to grill. So I'll grill salmon and then I'll take zucchini or, or other veggies, cut it up, put it right on the grill. I like to grill asparagus a lot. Sometimes I'll put that right on the grill or more often what I'll do is get out the aluminum foil and I'll, I'll take a sheet of aluminum foil, put the asparagus on there, add a little bit of olive oil, different herbs and spices, and then wrap up the aluminum foil into a little sealed packet. And I'll just set that on the grill. So as I'm grilling my salmon, the asparagus will be cooking. I might flip it over halfway through. So it kind of kind of steams it, kind of roasts it a little bit, um, but it's super convenient because while I'm outside grilling, I'm able to do my vegetable and my protein source all at the same time. So I love to do asparagus. This last year I've been doing artichokes a lot on the grill. So I had started cooking them in the Instapot a bit ahead of time and then brush it with a little olive oil, herbs and spices, throw it on the grill, cut in half, throw it on the grill for a little bit. It was delicious, so we've, we've really enjoyed that. Lots of veggies. So cooked veggies are great. We do this a lot. This is a steam in the bag broccoli. Uh, it's just super convenient, because a, a lot of times when we get home, you know, we don't feel like making a, a big ornate meal. So cook up some protein, steam some vegetables. That's great, simple, nutritious. So um, green veggies are great, but it's actually, it's good to get a variety of colors. All the different colors of vegetables have different good things in there. So mi mixing it up is good. Bag salad, I talked about that with lunch. Oftentimes I'll do some sort of bag salad just because it's convenient. Um, it's also real convenient for dinner. We will get a head of red leaf lettuce or the, you know, the darker green lettuce sometimes and chop it up and clean it and everything. But the bag just makes it super convenient and it makes getting that salad on the plate really easy. And again, a homemade vinaigrette, we talked about that with lunch foods, where you can do olive oil, vinegar, maybe some lemon juice, some herbs and spices, low in salt, that could be a good way to go. So we've got a protein, about a palm size, half our plate is produce, whether that's raw vegetables like salad, cooked vegetables like the broccoli or zucchini, asparagus, artichokes, whatever it may be. Oh, and with the vegetables, doing canned, I grew up eating canned vegetables. My grandpa ate canned vegetables, my dad ate canned vegetables. So I grew up with it. Um, they can be fine. You lose a bit of nutrients when you, when you get it canned, but the bigger thing about canned veggies is the sodium content. So if you get a regular can of, this is no salt actually. If you get a regular can of green beans, these are the French style green beans, uh, serving as a half cup, and there's 290 milligrams of sodium in one serving of that. So 290 here, whereas this is the no salt added French cut green beans, and a serving is 10 milligrams of sodium. So really no comparison, super low in salt. So if you like canned vegetables, look for the no salt added. Sometimes they'll have lower sodium or reduced sodium. That can be a positive change, but sometimes it still has a lot of salt, kind of like with the lunch meats. Just because it's lower sodium doesn't mean it's low sodium. Frozen veggies are another great choice whether it's you know peas, corn, mixed vegetables, stir fry vegetables is one I used to get frozen a lot. Super convenient to cook into a stir fry, get with some chicken or maybe some tofu or something like that. Frozen veggies, they pick them when they're pretty much ripe. They freeze them right away. Most of the nutrients are locked in there. So fresh, I say is best. Frozen is great. Canned is okay if you like it. Just really watch that salt. So we got our protein, got our vegetables, and then we have our starch or whole grain. 
You don't necessarily have to have a starchy carb at every dinner, but if you want to, that's fine, and you can choose heart healthy options. So for instance, one that's become popular lately is what they call quinoa. So it's uh, similar to a whole grain. It is a good source of fiber. So a serving has three grams of fiber, pretty decent. And interestingly, quinoa has a lot of protein. There's six grams of protein in a serving of quinoa. That's really rare for a grain to have that much protein. So quinoa is a good option for a whole grain. Brown or wild rice is a good option. If you're doing pasta, you could get like a whole wheat pasta, which is gonna have some fiber and nutrients in there that the regular wouldn't have. And you know, there's a bunch of other whole grains out there. So those are good choices. Sometimes people like to have, you know, some sort of protein in potato. Potato's okay. It's a starchy carb. So if you have diabetes, if you're, you know, worried about your blood sugars, you don't want to be careful of things like potatoes or quinoa or any other grain. But generally speaking, potato's okay. Just be careful what you put on it. Because if you take a potato and you cover it with butter and sour cream, maybe some cheese and bacon bits, not going to be so heart healthy anymore. But if it's just a potato with, you know, salmon and a salad, that's a pretty good choice. Or I actually prefer sweet potatoes. Like I like the, what they call like a garnet yam, the kind of deep orange ones. Those are my favorite. And those actually are more blood sugar friendly than a white potato. Uh, I think they're delicious. If I have the time, I'll cook it in the oven. I love how the, you know, kind of the sugar bubbles out of it. You poke the holes, the sugar bubbles out of it. I, again, I think they're great. Maybe put some cinnamon on there. Or I'll just cook them in the microwave more often because it's super quick and it still comes out fine. Um, so, so that can be a good choice, and that's another good way to get some more colors. Like we talked about, you want a variety of colors of fruits and vegetables. So that deep, um, kind of orangey color in a sweet potato has a lot of beta carotene and, and other uh, good nutrients in there. So heart healthy dinners, the sky's the limit really. But again, keep in mind that plate. Lots of produce, so um, probably more vegetables at dinner for most people. Doing some fruit is fine some sort of protein that could be fish, lean meat, maybe beans, and then maybe some sort of starch, preferably a whole grain if you're gonna do a grain, or again, your potato, sweet potato, things like that to round out that meal. Just a good old fashioned balanced meal, kind of like my grandma and grandpa used to do. So I hope that helps for putting together some healthy dinners.